Hi, thank you so much for coming. Um, this has been a really exciting conference and it's really such a pleasure and an honor to be able to talk to you today about the things that I think are important, uh, especially when it comes to ethics and AI. Uh, so let's get into it. So walking around this conference, trying to get a sense of where the pulse was when it came to AI and financial services, I realized it was critical to um, start moving into, do I have my slides up? Good. <laughs> start moving into a description of what this technology actually is. So at a high level, you can understand there's all of technology. A subset of that is artificial intelligence. A subset of that is machine learning. A subset there is deep learning. And then deep learning is what I'm seeing throughout this conference. Deep learning separates into two types discriminative artificial intelligence and generative artificial intelligence. And that's um, here what people are calling Gen AI, which is a really uh, catchy way to call it. I think I'll, I'll pick that up as well. Um, so discriminative artificial intelligence and generative artificial intelligence are getting a little bit conflated here. So let me explain what they are. In discriminative artificial intelligence, you're making predictions based on patterns in data. In generative, you're making new content based on patterns in data. Um, so predictions for discriminative artificial intelligence is things like risk assessment. So the pattern is what has been risky in the past. Things like fraud detection, where you're trying to figure out what's unexpected that's similar to what fraudsters might do. These are direct predictions. You're making classification decisions, these kinds of things. Generative AI is where you're coming up with new content, which can either be text, so like chit chat conversations. It could be pictures, right? So images, videos, these kinds of things. It can also be voice. Voice synthesis is getting better and better in the gen AI sphere. The thing to know is that both of these types of artificial intelligence have key issues that you need to grapple with when you are using them in financial technology. So discriminative artificial intelligence exacerbates data bias. The input sources to the machine learning models have things like racism, have things like sexism, have stereotyping and hate behavior. These kinds of things need to be balanced when you train a model and measured when you're evaluating the model. And then additional um, post-deployment monitoring in order to make sure that these systems aren't getting worse, aren't making situations worse than they would be if the people were in charge as opposed to the automated system. For Gen AI, the thing that I really want to make sure everyone is aware of here is that it's not reality. It's not facts. And when we talk about things like LLMs, large language models, which came up in, in the last session, um, that has been used now as a type of generative AI, Gen AI. And it's best thought of as a plausible sentence generator. What might people say? from what I've learned in statistical patterns of the data. I'm going to generate that. The state of the art in Gen AI does not ground in a knowledge base. It does not ground in facts. And because of that, we don't have control over what it says that might be completely made up and what it says that is true and helpful and will lead people to good outcomes. So it's critical to take these things into account when integrating these kinds of technologies into your systems. Um, so here's a fundamental question you must ask as you start to implement artificial intelligence within different technologies. And that is, is this an improvement over our current approach? Does this work better than it currently does in terms of helping different people, in terms of being fair. And let's talk about what this improvement can mean, right? It can mean a lot of things. And this is where we get to the fundamentals of ethics in artificial intelligence. This is where we talk about values. What do we value as a company? And how do we make sure that when we're integrating artificial intelligence, it's appropriately hitting on our values? So in the financial sector, sector, you might be interested in things like um, advancing technology, want to stay you know, ahead of the game. 
uh, efficiency, lowering cost, uh, increasing productivity, uh, short-term profit. But as you learn with ethical AI work, there's tensions between all these different values. You can't have something like the most values if you prioritize some, it comes at the cost of others. And in this case, it comes at the cost of so many other things. So if you output a technology that produces false information, you lose trust. If you don't have appropriate safeguards in place to protect the privacy of people, uh, you're hurting things like security. You're not able to retain your customers, and that means you lose profit long term. Um, and so these are the kinds of things that need to be spelled out as you implement and as you um, procure and put into your systems artificial intelligence in order to understand whether or not it is an improvement given the values that you have as a company. Um, so this can be understood really well if you get the machine learning pipeline. I have many tutorials on this. Um, but at a high level, machine learning works like this. Data is collected, model is trained, output is generated, the model is deployed. Um, there's human bias that comes throughout the entire process, propagating further and further. And at each stage, this needs to be modeled and accounted for. So during procurement, when you're buying artificial intelligence systems, it's important to ask how these kinds of things are being taken care of in development. Um, and one of the most uh, serious issues I think I see given this conference is the issue of automation bias, which is our tendency to believe systems that are technical just because they're technical. We, we uh, allow ourselves to not notice things that might be false, and we really get sold into things that might be true. Um, so this automation bias issue is critical when you have artificially intelligent systems interfacing with customers. Um, this also creates a feedback loop uh, as we get more data from customer behavior, use it to train new models. Um, I like to call it bias laundering, mostly because I love this GIF and I want to share it, um, but also because I think it captures a lot of what's happening and that's not being modeled, that's not being taken account when these kinds of systems are being developed. Um, so the key here is that AI development is not value neutral. There are so many values at play, and we need to be very clear about what they are throughout the end-to-end -end process in order to make sure that we're hitting on the things that are most important for our companies and not creating situations that are worse long term. Um, here are some examples of the values, the specific values at play in each stage. Um, there's a lot of values. This is a whole other two-hour talk. Um, but in particular for this audience, for this event, I think it's important to look at the output being generated stage, where some of the values that are most important have to do with inclusion of the user and diversity. So let me explain how this works. When you have an AI system that's being seen by tons of customers, you need to analyze the output critically, and you need to do so in a way where you are clear that it works well for everyone. Here's how you do it. You specify the context of use. You choose the metrics for evaluation based on the different kinds of foreseeable errors. And then you disaggregate. You look how well it works for different kinds of populations. So let me explain what this means. And I really want to see this coming out more in financial work. Um, it's really, it's getting lost in the weeds. And it's so important. Not all errors are created equal. When someone tells you their system is accurate, take a step back and wonder what it means to be accurate. Because different kinds of errors can happen in a system, and some might have more weight than others. So for example, a false positive is something like privacy and images, where something that doesn't need to be blurred gets blurred. That can just be a bummer. A false negative is something that needs to be blurred getting blurred. That's identity theft. So it's really critical to make sure that in this kind of use case, um, the false negatives aren't, aren't proliferating and the false positives are maybe weighted more heavily. An example of the opposite case um, is something like algorithmic trading, where a false positive would be signaling a trade when that shouldn't happen. 
And a false negative would be something like failing to signal a trade when it should. In this case, a false positive is much worse of a risk than the false negative. And so you need to evaluate in light of these foreseeable errors in the context of use of the system. The next step there is pretty simple. You just disaggregate. How well does this work for women? How well does this work for men? Older people, younger people. Is the performance roughly equal across these different kinds of subgroups? When it's equal, that's called a fair system. And then that's a system that perhaps can be deployed. Um, so here's how you develop more ethical uh, AI within the finance industry, in summary. What are our values? What are we prioritizing? How might those values be met or harmed by the AI system? How is the system being evaluated res with respect to the context of use? Are we disaggregating across the different subpopulations? Have we reached roughly equal performance? And if we do this, we can move from something like majority representation of artificial intelligence to diverse and inclusive representation for more ethical AI. Thanks.